All right, everyone, meet William the Dwarven Imposter. <laughs> so, we're gonna talk a little bit about Dwarven equipment and uh, fighting style. So, he'll be on his knees to simulate the correct height. And um, we're gonna go through several weapons here to see the implications of that sort of height and general build. So, the most iconic combination the thing that i've seen the most often is the quote-unquote tower shield and axe combination for a dwarf so it seems to make sense right they are they are short and stocky so give them a weapon that is short and stocky and give them a shield that covers pretty much the entire body how much can you see of me if i assume a fighting stance how much can you see right here i can see your shoulders you can see my shoulders. Shoulders and up, that's it. So you cannot see my sword at all. I can see the little clasp on the top of uh, your coat. Yeah. And that's it. So in other words, if I stand here and then suddenly go around yeah, there, you cannot see it whatsoever. I can see like your shoulders twist. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I can just about see your head and that's it. I can see your weapon as it comes in. But if you swing low, then I, I really can't see that properly. Or if I, if I have it low like this, yeah, I, I see absolutely nothing. I you see it the see moment it, it comes it around. Moving, and you can see it when it gets to there. Yeah, that's it. And then I, I have just this short little moment to adjust. I mean, what I could do is look past the well, shield if I, if like I this. Come like that and you hook it down. And then, so then I could yeah. move that forward and then strike like this. That would be possible. So, yeah, I suppose it would be more a matter of looking past the shield. In fact, I could even imagine having a, a little cutout here on the side yeah. so that you can just look past it here. And then, essentially, I know that this entire left side is fully covered. I can look around the shield. I know this is not going to hurt me. So I can then get this push against, try to move forward, things like that. So this would be a lot more viable. Even though the reach is severely limited, the good thing about that is that he doesn't expose himself as much when guarding high. So the typical thing if you fight somebody with a shield is you would faint high, draw up their guard, and then you would go down to the, the legs. I, I can barely even get his legs. Like Even if he raises up, I have, I have like half a knee as a target area right now. So if I, if I wanted to get down there, this would be extremely difficult for me to even reach. So if anything, I'd have to try to go around the other side where of course his weapon is. So it's not that easy really to faint them out. But at the same time, I mean, the, the problem is still if he raises up to protect his head and this is going to be the main area of attack because his head is the most exposed to me. So in that case, you know, any time he raises up his shield, I mean, you, you could also... Duck like that. Yeah, exactly, you, you, you could. Around. You could potentially do that. So, but the problem with that is, of course, um, if you if you just have the shield standing around, just do that. It's a lot less mobile. We we'll just have to ignore the fact that you're very static right now. A dwarf would, of course, be able to move around more. However, shorter legs mean shorter steps, so they can't. They won't have the same sort of footwork that a taller person does. A tall person can cover a lot of ground very quickly and move to the side like quite substantially. A dwarf would be a little more limited. I feel that a smaller shield would actually be better. If he's got a Viking style round shield, this is still plenty of protection. In fact, from my point of view, his entire body is covered. I see from you know the the lower nose, well I, pretty much from the nose to the top of the head is exposed and uh, that's it. Depending on how he holds it, part of his knee may be exposed but that's it. I so, can, I can squat down. You exactly. Know, I can bend my knees. I yeah, can you, you can. Get even lower. Yeah, you can. You can really reduce the the target size that I have available here, and this is definitely an, an important factor. If you're fighting somebody who's that small of a target, I mean, they're they're wide, but they're still short. It just limits the options that you have. So if I have to deal with this, and he has the mobility of the shield, so even if I do feign high and then try to come here he can move that now the drawback is here's the reach problem so this I, I hit quite easily he can barely get my arm so he has a lot less options that's right on the end of the yeah. uh, haft as well 
and you have human-sized arms, yes. so supposedly you would be even shorter than that. So you could just about hit my hand. If I, if I use my full reach, like as far as it goes, I could possibly strike you here. At this point, you can hit absolutely nothing. Like you can just about hit the hands and that's it. So the reach is definitely a disadvantage. If you've done historical martial arts sparring and, and you fought people who are taller than you, you know how annoying it is. They can be way far back and they take a single step and they can strike you and there's nothing you can do other than try to strike their arms. So, it is a drawback. However, he has one very substantial advantage to think of, and that is if he gets into grappling range, I'm kind of screwed. So why is that? Because his center of gravity is extremely low. So he, exactly, if he can easily take me down like this, because if you've watched MMA fighters or wrestlers and you've seen a takedown, you, know, you see the guy go, get pretty low and you know, dive in so to get the shoulders under the center of, of gravity of that person because that way you can take them down pretty easily. I have no way of doing that with him. I cannot, like in order to try a takedown on a dwarf, <laughs> I have to essentially do this, which would be dumb. So grappling is pretty much out of the question for me, especially considering that a dwarf is stronger than a human. There's absolutely no way I cannot move him. I mean, you can, you, you would think that, well, you can just bear down on him because you can just kind of go over and push him over. But no, you cannot because he's going to be very grounded. As I said, low center of gravity. He's just a bunch of muscles and dense bone, denser than humans. And uh, he can use his skeletal structure and his body weight to just easily push against that, whereas I have to kind of come from above and use my shoulders and my delts, and it's, it's just not as much force. I, I could push far better up here than I can down here, unless I lower myself, and then this is also rather awkward. So I wouldn't want to get close to a dwarf because they could just basically grab my legs and just walk forward and scoop me up and throw me on the ground very easily. What I kind of want to do is get over the top of the shield. So, in case of the sword, the good old murder strike would actually come in rather handy. Because this way, even if he blocks here, I get over the shield. If that doesn't hit him, I can rake it down, thrust the pommel in his face, and then try to shank him. Okay, so what if it's the other way around? I've got the, the shield and weapon, and he's got something that compensates for his lack in reach. Now, this is always, spears are a pain in the butt to deal with, or a pain in the anything, really. It's because I don't know where this is coming from. This could be coming from just about anywhere, and particularly, you see this right there. So, if I keep the, the shield here, even if I try to make myself a smaller target, he can quite easily get my, my foot there. Now, getting stabbed in the shin is not a lethal wound, but it's going to be debilitating. It's not good news, of course. So I would have to try to come in because I want to get past this spear. I really want to get my, my shield in between and I want to come in here. Now, of course, wanting to come in means once again, I get into grappling range with a dwarf, which is not quite ideal. So. You could say, arguably, it would be the best thing for a dwarf to compensate for the, their lack of reach by using a longer weapon. The furthest you can get me with a spear is, well, to get decent penetration would be control. about here. Yeah. So that's almost the same reach that I have, even though I have the shorter weapon. So this would be pretty equal. However, what I'm thinking is because the dwarf is that much stouter and more powerful, it would be a lot harder to get past the spear. So for example, if I try to hook this and get it out of the way, he may just be able to hold against it and just say, no, screw you, this is not going anywhere. And if he does, and if he manages to force my weapon off center again, all you need to do is just force it into the center line. Yeah. So if I try to push it here, and it's in the center line now, and you can just stab me. So this could be potentially quite difficult to deal with if you have somebody who is vastly stronger and has a lower center of gravity. So if you swipe my, my uh, axe to the side, so you guide it in the direction in which it goes, and there now you've got me. 
Now this is standard fighting uh, tactics. This doesn't really change with the height. So pole arms for a dwarf would absolutely be viable. Would they be better than for a human? Not necessarily. I'd say the uh, pros and cons probably balance each other because he's got shorter reach than a human with a pole arm would but he strikes harder and he has more stability and he can possibly control the bind more easily. He can definitely compensate for his limited mobility due to the short legs and all of that with a longer weapon because that way if I try to get around he just has to move the weapon around and follow me this way and he just needs to take small steps with his feet and he can still keep the weapon on point. So then of course there is the dual wielding which is another very common thing. Dwarves are often shown either dual wielding axes or an axe plus something, a mace, a sword, anything like that. So this I would consider the least viable out of anything you could do as a dwarf because he doesn't have the protection of the shield, he does not have the reach of a pole arm and it, he makes it quite easy for me to exploit any opening of which there are many. If I stay at my reach here, he just doesn't have much on me. Like he could possibly strike to my my forward leg with the axe, but no, he doesn't even, doesn't even reach. Especially considering that he would have shorter arms than this. With the other sword, or if, if you change your stance, right leg forward, you would have a bit more reach here. So if I can strike you here, can you strike me anywhere? Uh, probably, block yeah, probably leg, yep. I can just so you can just about get the leg. I draw it up, I see the his axe is coming up. I control the sword because I know that's his only other weapon. In this position, there's absolutely nothing he can do with his axe against me because he simply can't reach. Yep. So all I need to do is bring it up now, do a false edge cut to the head or to the back of the neck or you know, wherever he's got least armor, or I could even just slice the arm from here and then go for a thrust. The other typical thing is, of course, axes. So a dwarf with an ax would actually do fairly well, because if it's a long enough ax, then he's got the, the reach, you know, compensate for the difference. And also important, he can change his grip and slide up and down to uh, adjust. So. For example, if he strikes at me, I catch this, bring this down, strike to the leg. If he tries, okay, if he is a really stupid human or elf or anything and he gets too close to me, so he actually steps in, so I can now, if you strike at me, I can now choke up, strike here, and now I, I've got this fairly close, so I now move in. I can now use this like a one-handed axe and clobber him in the head. Now this is the point where being shorter is actually better. Because as I said, we've already talked about the, uh, the issues of grappling. If he keeps his distance, well, as I said, I can still compensate here with the reach of the axe, even if I have shorter arms. So I can strike to the shield, make sure it's, it's turned, thrust in there, for example, or hook the shield, get it all the way, thrust in, things like that. Plus, of course, his legs will always be vulnerable. So I just need to make sure that I'm safe from the sword. So he strikes at me, I just swap it aside and there is the leg. Or I could make the movement more efficient by going around here, swinging there, so if I swing down here, it's kind of difficult for him to get that far down. I'm exposed, so I need to be aware of this and draw up the guard immediately after I've thrown this. But this is the same regardless of whether you're fighting humans, dwarves, anything. This is just basic fighting. And here the gauntlets will be pretty important because if anything goes wrong, he strikes at me and I mess up even slightly, this will be the end of the fingers. That's the same, again, regardless of species, but uh, this is something to keep in mind. So plate armor would actually be very useful, especially also if you consider, again, the dwarves have uh, their, their mass distributed pretty low. So they're not going to be as easy to be pushed over in grappling, etc. That's actually one of the major issues when you, you are in full steel plate armor. People can more easily 
grapple you and take you down because your weight distribution is now a little different. With a dwarf, it doesn't matter. You're not going to take them down anyway. So they can be this you know, tank pretty much with limited mobility, but it's not going to bother them as much because, well, they're fairly strong, they're pretty compact, plus it will solve the, or at least address the issue of them being very exposed because if they are covered head to toe in steel, they don't need to worry that much about being hit. If they, especially if the opponent has, say, a one-handed sword, they may just literally tank it because they know that, well, it's just, for one, it's just a puny human and they probably, they don't strike as hard as a dwarf and a dwarf is naturally very robust. If they then on top of that have armor, they can just take hits that humans wouldn't. So you, you, they can literally just charge in. So you, you swing the sword at me, I, I'm in full armor. I do not care. I just let it hit my arm, whatever, and I'm just gonna continue and swing through because screw you, puny human. Since they have less body area to cover, they, the armor could be, you know, relative to the size, could be somewhat lighter. At the same time, because they are sturdier and stronger, they could tolerate wearing heavier armor. So they could make it thicker and then what humans would generally wear. If you think of, for example, Renaissance armor that was designed to take gunfire, it was very thick, very heavy was uh, definitely draining on the endurance, but they could do it. So if the dwarf has enough stamina, he could pull it off, he or she or whatever. So in that case, wearing extra heavy armor could definitely give you an edge or rather keep you safe from the edge. And then you move in, you're just like, nope, I don't care. I'm just gonna go in no matter what you do. This would be probably the worst possible scenario for a human to have a weapon short enough that their reach even despite the longer limbs is shorter than that of the dwarf i would not want to face this because it kind of sucks i think the only really viable thing here is to project the shield and yeah. press it to the dwarf yeah and then hit with the spike yeah so this this is a situation which that looks pretty bad for the dwarf because now he can he is on top of me literally he can strike from above to my head However, we already talked about the, the grappling thing. So if the dwarf finds himself here, he'd just be like, nope, pull this down, smack him in the head. Or if he's already in the process of swinging at me, so you push against me, you swing at me, dwarf is, nope, wrenches the weapon away, maybe strikes him with it, wrenches the, the shield away, whatever. This, you don't want to be that close to a dwarf. It's not good times. Dwarven longsword, this I feel would not work out very well. Because with a longsword, you need a lot of mobility, you need good footwork, which is just what the dwarf doesn't have. He, do, he cannot move that fast. Also, he cannot uh, cross distance very fast because of his short legs. And this is really what you want. With a with longsword, you want to be out as far as you can possibly be. And uh, so, I mean, of course you can make it work. You can make just about anything work. Even if the weapon isn't perfectly designed for you, you can still deal with it, of course, but I feel like this is less ideal than the other options because it does not have the range, uh, the, the reach of the pole arm or the power and um, it's somewhat, yeah, you can't hook with it. Well, I mean, you can, well. but generally it's, it's just not ideal. I would have to deal with this you know, while being at a reach disadvantage and not being terribly mobile. So I feel like the, gen the better choice would probably be a pole arm, a spear, or you know, shield and axe. The axes being associated with dwarves actually make a lot of sense pra practically because, as I said, they are stout, they are strong, so they can handle something that isn't as well balanced. With a sword, you don't need that much strength to use it effectively, especially depending on the type, because you have most of the mass right here. It's, it's easy to maneuver. With an axe, it's the other way around. So you've got all this mass here. So this is more exhausting to use and it requires somewhat more strength. So a dwarf could go for even a relatively large head. I say relatively because some of the axes, fantasy axes are just ridiculous by any standards. And also with thrusts, they can use their higher body weight because a proper thrust doesn't go like this, but a proper thrust 
is this. You step into it. So with stout, strong dwarven legs and a strong core, if they brace themselves and they shove their entire body weight into the thrust, it'll be very effective and hard to stop. So, yeah, these are some of the ideas. If I was a dwarf, I'd probably encase myself in pretty thick steel, a suit of plate armor, and then use probably some kind of polearm. A halberd, probably, or a two-handed axe, something like that. And pretty decent mitten gauntlets to make sure that the hands are safe and the arms. And then I'd, at first I try to even out the difference in reach with the weapon. If they have a more reach anyway, by default, I try to get in as close as possible. That's about all I can think of for right now. Hope you found it entertaining and thanks for watching. And thanks, William, for the help. You're a good dwarf. Thanks. <laughs> Do my best. <laughs> Let's grab some ale. Take off this dwarven meat. Fucking cloak. Yeah, it's, Holy it's, shit. Yes, I tried this one here. That's, that's yeah. really hot. I'm so hot in this. Huh? Thank you.